Welcome sa part 2 ng ating lecture 3. Hierarchy of Standards Fundamental Standard One whose value has been established without recourse to another standard of the same quantity. International Standard is a standard recognized by an international agreement to serve as the basis for fixing the values of all other standards of quantity concerned. National Standard or yung Primary Standard one which establishes the value of all other standards of a given quantity within a national or particular country. Yung example na to yung NIS. NIS stands for National uh, Institute for Standard and Technology. So may laboratory dito ang NIS kung saan pwede nating ipadala yung ating mga calibrator para makalibrate at mabigyan ng certification na ito ay calibrated and sumusunod sa standard. Secondary standard, one whose values has been established by comparison with primary standard. And an example of a secondary standard ay tinatawag nating working standard. A secondary standard, standard used to verify measuring instrument in places such as factories, shop, etc. So yung mga instrumentation and real, uh, control-related companies dito na nagkakalibrate ng kanilang instrument within their offices, may tinatawag ng calibrator. Ngayon, itong calibrator na to kailangan ng certification na siya ay mismong calibrated at para magkaroon ka ng certification, uh, kailangan mo i-renew kung may expired na. Uh, merong yearly, meron ding every 2 years, meron ding every 3 years, etc. etc. Ngayon, itong Calibrator na to ilalabas nga ng office, ipapadala sa laboratory, itetest at itse-check doon. Kailangan ba ng adjustment o hindi, gagawa ng test result at test report. Ilalagay yung kung anong oras, anong date, ano yung environment condition. At saka naman ibabalik ulit doon sa office na nagpapatest. With the certification na. SI base unit. Pamilyar man tayo sa pitong SI base unit. Meter, kilogram, second, ampere, kelvin, candela, and mole. So, gumawa sila ng prototype per kilogram para masabing 1 kilogram is 1 kilogram. It was manufactured in 1889, officially defined by a lump of metal stored in a vault in France and made up, made up of 90% platinum and 10% iridium. Sa SI units and symbols, mayroong rules and guidelines for proper usage. Ah, hindi na natin gaano iisa-isahin. Yung iba naman ay self-explanatory na. So, number one, abbreviations are avoided and only standard unit symbols, SI prefix symbols, unit names, and SI prefix, prefix names are used. Number two, unit symbols are not modified by addition of subscript or other information. So, kung gusto mong sabihin na the maximum value or the peak value of your voltage is 100 volts, instead of writing B is equal to 1000 B max, the proper usage is B max is equal to 1000 volt. Number 3. Values of standard are expressed in acceptable units using Arabic numericals and the symbol of the units. For example, M is equal to 5 space kg. Pero hindi, na, hindi naman tayo gumagamit ng M is equal to 5 kilograms. Uh, yung 5 kilograms ay in a words talaga. So gumagamit tayo ng uh, mga Arabic numerals and symbols for units. Pero yun nga, may mga acceptable units lang. Number 4, there is a space between the numerical value and the unit symbol. Even when the value is used as an adjective, except in the case of superscript units for plain angle. Ang ibig sabihin lang naman na to, uh, after nung numerical value, lalagyan natin ng space. Hindi proper yung paglalagay ng dash o kaya yung kadikit agad yung uh, unit. Uh, except for angle. So, uh, better pa rin tingnan kung sa angle, uh, magkakadikit sila. So, yung, yung superscript na unit ng angle. 
information is not mixed with unit symbols. For example, the form the water content is 20 ml per kilogram. Hindi naman natin, hindi natin pwedeng uh, isulat siya na kasama yung uh, symbol ng water. 20 ml H2O per kilogram. Medyo nakakalito. Tsaka parang uh, hindi siya maganda uh, tingnan. Parang magulo siya basahin. Kung baga kung magbabasa ka ng isang specification or report or document. Uh, lalo na to 20 ml of water per kilogram. So, uh, hindi proper na isingit natin yung word na of water dun sa mismong numerical value and uh, unit. Number six, it is clear to which unit symbol a numerical value belongs and which mathematical operation applies to the value of quantity. Ang sinasabi lang naman na to, kada numerical value, lalagyan natin ng unit. Pero, huwag kakalimutan yung space. For example, 35 cm by 48 cm. Hindi pwede yung 35 by 48 cm. Kasi, nakaka-mislead or uh, nakakalito, hindi clear. Ano yung unit nung 35? Pwedeng meter, pwedeng kilometer. So, para malinaw, ilagay natin yung unit after nung numerical value lagi. Number 7, unit symbols are unaltered in the plural. So, kahit na in words, pwede natin sabihin, the length is equal to 75 centimeters, kapag nasa unit, CM lang, hindi gagawing CMS or ESCMES. Number 8, unit symbols are not followed by a period unless at the end of a sentence. So, kapag unit symbol, uh, hindi siya kailangan lagyan ng tuldok. Understood na unit symbol siya. So, yung next term naman natin ay traceability. What is traceability? Property of a measurement result whereby the result can be related to a reference. Usually, national or international standards through a documented and broken chain of calibrations each contributing to the measurement uncertainty. Ibig sabihin, bawat test result and calibration uh, test na ginagawa, uh, dinodocument ng maayos. Sabi ko nga, sinusulat yung time, date, and yung environment condition, as well as yung iba pang factor na pwedeng i-consider na makaka sa calibration. Why traceability is important? Traceability gives the user confidence that his or her measurements agree with the national standards within the stated uncertainty. It, is, uh, it also ensures that the measurements will be equivalent to those made using different instruments from different laboratory. So, ito yung tinatawag nating traceability chain. Uh, yung NIS, yung nabanggit natin kanina, yung National Institute for Standard and Technology consider as international and national laboratory. Yung secondary laboratory naman natin kung saan yung ginagamit ng mga instrument ay under secondary standard ay yung MPC, yung Micro Precision Laboratory and uh, Fluke Singapore sa ring example. Kung saan doon natin pinapadala yung mga working standard natin katulad ng Fluke 5520A at yung Iba pang calibrator na meron kadalasan yung mga office dito sa Pilipinas. There are, uh, there are frequently asked questions when it comes to traceability. Number one, is it correct to say that measurements or standards are traceable? Only measurement results are traceable. Number two, is it correct to say that an organization is traceable? No. Only measurement results are traceable. Number three, who is runs, uh, responsible for supporting claims of traceability? Siyempre yung nag-test at nag-measure at nag-check kung calibrated ba yung equipment. Number four, who is res uh, responsible for assessing the validity of claims of traceability? 
yung gagamit nung measurement na yun, the user of the result of measurement. Number 5, what should I look for in a valid claim of traceability? So, yung una, clearly defined particular quantity that has been measured. Number 2, a complete description of the measurement system or working standard used to perform the measurement. So, meron din kasing mga procedures and working standard na sinusunod uh, per instrument yun and, or per equipment. Uh, hindi pare-parehas. Merong uh, may complex, meron din namang simple uh, procedures ang ginagawa. Number three, a stated measurement result which includes a documented uncertainty. Ito ngayon tinutukoy natin. Lahat ng nagko-contribute sa uncertainty is sinasama sa document. Number four, a complete specification of the reference at the time the measurement system or working standard was compared to it. So, ibig sabihin yung instrument mismo kung saan kinumpared yung instrument being calibrated, uh, sinasama din sa report yung specification. Facts regarding measurement. Question, can you ever measure the true value of something? Sa tingin nyo, kaya ba nating masukat ang tunay at eksaktong value na isang bagay? The answer is, no. There will always be errors. Bakit laging may error? Kasi merong internal or external factor na maaaring makaapekto sa ating pagme-measure. Pangalawa, yung measuring instrument na ginagamit natin ay hindi rin naman ideal or perfect. And pangatlo, yung ating way ng pagme-measure, yung procedure ng ating pagme-measure. Pang-apat, yung environment, yung condition ng paligid. Uh, pang uh, lima, yung mismong ating uh, mini-measure, uh, ano yung condition niya, depende rin yun. So, ibig sabihin, maraming factor ang pwedeng maka-apekto para masabi mo ito talaga ang tunay na value, true value nung uh, something na iyong mini-measure. So, the answer is no, there will always be errors. How important is this fact? Gano ka important? Uh, kahalaga na nalaman natin to. Measurement is never complete un unless you know how good it is. How is this taken into account in calibration? By quantifying and documenting the measurement uncertainty in the measurement being done. Yun nga yung sinasabi nating measurement uncertainty, yun yung doubt o duda natin o parang uh, hindi kasiguraduhan dun sa measurement na binigay ng ating instrument. Bakit meron tayong hindi kasiguraduhan o doubt? Dahil nga dun sa mga iba't ibang factor na pwede natin i-consider na nag-contribute para hindi natin makuha yung true value ng ating measure Ang tawag nga dun ay measurement uncertainty. Meron tayong tinatawag na TAR and TOR o yung ating test accuracy, uh, accuracy ratio and test uncertainty Ratio. Yung una is the ratio of accuracy of the unit under test, UUT, and the accuracy of standard. Yung pangalawa, ratio of accuracy of the unit under test and the estimated calibration uncertainty. Ibig sabihin, hindi rin natin makukuha yung tunay na value ng uncertainty. Pero pwede natin makuha yung estimated calibration value niya. At gamit yon, pwede natin kuhanin yung tinatawag natin test uncertainty ratio. Pero hindi natin gaano i-discuss yung graph ng TAR and TOR since hindi pa malinaw sa atin ano nga ba yung tinatawag na uncertainty. So what is measurement uncertainty? Uncertainty of measurement is the doubt which exists about the result of any measurement. Ibig sabihin, kunwari meron akong 10 volts diyan, kumuha ako ng digital multimeter, nag-measure ako. Siyempre, hindi ko alam kung ano yung value nun. Nung na-measure ko, lumabas 9.7 volts. Ngayon, tatanggapin ko pa yung value na 9.7 volts. Maaaring within 9.7 volts, yung value talaga nung may measure ko. Pero, alam ko na may mga factor na dapat kinonsider ko at pwede kong i-add or uh, i-less dun sa measurement na nakuha ko. Kagaya na lang nung aking... Wire. For example, nung nag-measure ako noon, maaaring 
nagkaroon ng tinatawag na loading effect, possible. And yung way ng aking pagme-measure yung condition ng environment kung kailan ko measure And kung nauulit ko ba, halimbawa tinanggal ko yung aking probe, binalik ko, 9.7 pa rin ba yung nakuha? What if 9.65 this time, inalis ko, binalik ko, nakuha ngayon ay 9.75. So, kung paulit-ulit at uh, random pa rin yung nakukuha ang value, maring hindi ko masabing 9.7 talaga yung value niya. Pero, alam ko, close siya sa 9.7. Yun yung tinatawag nating uncertainty. Merong doubt na nag-exist dun sa measurement na nakuha natin. Pero hindi agad, o hindi ibig sabihin agad nun, mali yung measurement na nakuha natin. Ano nga ba yung pinagkaiba nila? What is error and what is uncertainty? Error is the difference between the measured value and the true value of the thing being measured. So, meron nga tayong tinatawag na error. Pero, uh, yung measurement na binigay sa atin, hindi naman natin agad masasabi na, na mali. Na yun, na, kasi since hindi naman natin alam, ano ba talaga yung value nung minimeasure natin. So, yung doubt na yun, ang tawag doon ay uncertainty. Yung doubt natin sa binigay, na, uh, binigay ng instrument natin na measurement. The uncertainty of measurement tell us something about its quality. Expressing uncertainty of measurement. Two numbers are really needed in order to quantify an uncertainty of measurement. Una, interval. So, yung width of margin. Pangalwa, confidence level. It states how sure we are that a true value is within that margin. For example, Nag-measure tayo ng length, 20 cm plus minus 1 cm at a level confidence of 95%. Tingnan natin itong uh, diagram na ito. Sa letter A, both the result and the uncertainty fall inside the specified limits. This is class as compliance. Ibig sabihin, uh, yung instrument natin ay compliance pa din sa standard. Bakit? Meron mang uncertainty yung ating measurement na nakuha. Kung pasok naman yung uncertainty na yon at yung mismong test result o yung measurement result na nakuha natin ay pasok sa upper and lower limit. Ibig sabihin, compliance yung instrument na yon Acceptable, gamitin. Sumusunod sa standard. Sa case naman ng letter D, neither the result nor any part of the uncertainty band falls within the specified limit. This is classed as a non-compliance. Ibig sabihin, yung mismong result at yung uncertainty mismo niya ay parehas na hindi pumasok sa range ng upper and lower limit. So, yung instrument na yon considered na non-compliance. Unacceptable na yon gamitin lalo na sa mga R&D company, sa mga testing company. Since, uh, i-mamark na siya as non-compliance instrument. For case B and C, neither completely inside nor outside the limits. No firm conclusion about compliance can be made. So, sa, for letter B and letter C, hindi pa agad natin mamark uh, siya na compliance or non-compliance. So, merong mga procedure and process na ginagawa paano uh, magde-decide for this instrument. Maaaring magkaroon din ng mga adjustment kung merong provision for adjustment yung instrument at kung ito ay sumusunod din sa standard yung pag adjust na gagawin. ISO 17025 on measurement uncertainty. It is the estim uh, estimation of uncertainty. Sinabi nga natin, ay uh, nilalagay pa rin natin, lalo na sa mga report, yung value ng uncertainty. At para makuha natin yung value ng uncertainty, uh, in-estimate natin siya. Kinocompute natin siya. So, sa section 5.4.6, a calibration laboratory or a testing laboratory performing its own calibration, uh, calibrations shall, and, shall have and shall apply 
a procedure to estimate the uncertainty of measurement for all calibration and types of calibrations. So, ibig sabihin kung ikaw ay ISO compliant, kailangan sundin mo yung uh, isa sa section na ito it, uh, about calibration. So, kailangan meron tayong procedure to estimate the uncertainty of measurement per calibration na ginagawa natin. Sources of measurement uncertainty. Ano ba yung mga sources ng measurement uncertainty? Number one, the reference standards and reference. Materials use. Methods and equipment use. Environmental condition, katulad naman nung mga nabanggit natin kanina. Properties and condition of the item being tested or uh, being tested or calibrated and the operator or kung sino yung mismong nag tetes why is measurement uncertainty important number one to make good quality measurement and to understand the result calibration where the uncertainty of measurement must be reported on the certificate test where the uncertainty of measurement is needed to determine a pass or fail kung compliance siya o and compliance. Tolerance, where you need to know the uncertainty before you can decide whether the tolerance is met, lalo na pag gumagawa tayo ng mga specification. Uh, specification. Kailangan, uh, kung magbibigay tayo ng tolerance, sigurado tayo na bawat value na makukuha natin doon ay pasok lagi doon sa tolerance na yon. How is measurement uncertainty obtained? So, meron tayong tiyatawag na GAM, Guide, to the expression of uncertainty of measurement. Consider verifying 34401A digital multimeter. So, it is a type of digital multimeter. Verifying the DM, uh, DMM's measurement performance at 100 millivolts DC. So, tinitingnan siya using the calibrator natin. Uh, determine and decide sources of uncertainty that may contribute to the doubt in Measurement. Ibig sabihin, ano kaya yung mga factor na pwede natin i-consider na source of uncertainty dun sa mamamessure natin sa instrument na ito. Some sources of uncertainty. So, number one, the most obvious and significant source of doubt is the inaccuracy of the calibrator's output value. For example, 100 millivolts might actually be 100 millivolts plus minus 0.0030 millivolts. Number two, repeatability or randomness in measurement values from the DMM. Ito yung mga measurement minsan na magalaw. Yung kada i-measure natin sa so yung value niya ay uh, naglalaro sa isang value pero nagmumove yung uh, smaller digits niya. For example, 100.0003 millivolts. And then, Next measurement natin, nag 99.999995 millivolts. And then next measurement, nag 100.0010 millivolts. Ibig sabihin, close to 100 millivolts pero uh, nagkakaroon ng uh, paiba-ibang uh, variation doon sa namin measure natin. Resolution or sensitivity limits of the DMM. So kung gaano... Uh, kataas or kababa yung resolution niya kung gaano kadami o ka unti lang yung possible na makuha niyang uh, smallest value for example at 100 millivolts uh, kung meron pa siyang 0.0000005 uh, uh, na dagdag kaya ba yung makuha o ma-measure ma-consider pa ng instrument natin pasok pa ba siya doon sa resolution o hindi na so, kung hindi na siya pasok, ibig sabihin, nananeglect natin or na ignore natin yung value na yon And yung pagkaka-ignore ng value na yon na hindi natin nakukuha dahil nga hindi na pasok sa resolution ng no instrument, ay source na ng uncertainty. Many other factors that could, uh, that could also contribute to uncertainty. Like ambient temperature effect, thermal electro... Uh, uh, thermal EM, EMF noise, loading, power line condition, etc. Consider all factors and include if they significantly contribute 
to measurement uncertainty. The GAMS classify two types of measurement uncertainty. So, dalawa yung type. Type A and type B. Si type A, errors that can be statistically evaluated from the set of measurement data, often considered as random uncertainty. For example, yung nabanggit natin, repeatability of the measurement influenced by DMM characteristics, signal stability, jitter, noise, etc. Yung type B naman, estimates of errors influencing the measurement that are not directly observed from the measurement data, often considered as systematic uncertainty. For example, errors of the calibrating standards, performance specification for accuracy, changes over time, and other conditions. Inherent limitation of the unit being tested, like the DMM resolution limitation. Pan samantala natin i skip muna yung mga slides for uh, uncertainty computation. Since kailangan din natin muna ng ma uh, discuss yung mga formula and statistical uh, treatment na ginagamit o gagamitin sa pag compute ng ating uncertainty. Basta tatandaan natin, meron tayong dalawang type ng uncertainty. Una, type A. Ito yung mga pwedeng ma-measure natin statistically and numerically. At yung ating type B, ito yung mga hindi natin ma-observe sa measurement mismo. Katulad na nga lang ng uh, resolution ng ating DMM. Yung ating mga noise, yung ating environment condition, etc. Ngayon, these are the summary or the steps to evaluate uncertainty. Una, decide what you need to find out from your measurements. Decide what actual measurement and calculations are needed to produce the final result. Number two, carry out the measurements needed. Number three, estimate the uncertainty type A and type P of each input quantity that feeds into the final result. Express all uncertainties in similar terms. Number four, decide whether the errors of the input quantities are dependent of each other. If you think not, then some extra calculation or information are needed. Number five, calculate the result of your measurement. Number six, find the combined standard uncertainty, uncertainty from all the individual aspects. Number seven, express the uncertainty in terms of a coverage factor together with the size of the uncertainty interval and the state of level of confidence, yung ating percentage. And last, write down the measurement result and the uncertainty and state how you got both of this. So, dapat well documented lahat, uh, the, the way, the procedure, the steps, the environment condition, nung kinuha mo yung measurement and as well as nung nag-compute tayo ng uncertainty considering both type A and type B uncertainties. So, nandito na tayo sa last na last two terms for common metrology. Ah, last two common metrology terms. Yung ating accuracy and precision. Define natin ang accuracy. Accuracy refers to the closeness of a measured value to a standard or known value. Precision. Precision refers to the closeness of two or more measurements to each other. Para mas madali nating maunawaan, tingnan natin ang picture na ito. Sa second picture, makikita natin accurate and precise. Ibig sabihin, yung mga measurement natin ay close sa true value. And then, consistent siya kung tayo ay magbibigay ng range, upper and lower limit, pasok, at consistent yung nakukuha nating values. So, accurate and precise. Pag sinabi nating precise o precision, may kinalaman sa number of measurement na gagawin. Kung ikaw ay magta-target shooting using a gun or an arrow, may kinalaman ang precision sa kung gaano kadaming bala o pana ang ititira mo at kung saan magla-landing o tatama ang mga ito. Kung consistent ka sa isang spot at isang area, masasabi natin na precise. At kung malapit naman ang iyong mga uh, inamaan ay malapit sa pinaka-target o sa ating sabihin na nating bulls ay masasabi natin na ang iyong uh, tira ay accurate. 
Sa first picture, nakalagay accurate but not precise. Makikita naman natin yung mga black dots na nagre-represent ng measurement close dun sa true value talaga. Pero, medyo scattered siya. So, uh, nung inulit-ulit yung measurement, hindi siya gaano consistent sa iisang value lang. Pero, bawat values na nakukuha is close naman dun sa ating true value. Sa third picture, not accurate, not precise. Wala na kang consistency, hindi na nga Uh, mag hindi natin makita sa isang spot lang yung mga black dots napakalayo pa doon sa ating target and sa last picture is precise but not accurate ibig sabihin consistent yung bawat measurement na nakukuha natin uh, nasa isang uh, range lang tayo na, na, yung nakukuha natin measurement within uh, a specific range lang lahat pero medyo malayo doon sa true value